Um, the last thing I wanted to mention about this common emitter amplifier uh, before we, we move on to other things uh, is the output voltage swing. Uh, that's going to be an important uh, parameter, an important characteristic for our amplifier because we're trying to use it as a voltage amplifier and um, the bigger or the larger the uh, voltage swing that we have, uh, the larger the ampli amplification factor that we can have um, before the amplifier behaves non-linearly. Uh, again, for a linear amplifier, we want the output to be um, an amplified version of the input. Uh, and so it should have the same shape as the input. Uh, if we run into, you know, cutoff or saturation, we're going to start seeing clipping effects in our output signal, which is an undesirable nonlinear effect. Uh, and so we typically will want to calculate what is our maximum output voltage swing. Trying to fit it all nicely in one page. Um, now we have that as um, the output voltage, you know, it may increase or decrease, so it may swing in the positive direction or in the negative direction. If it's swinging in the positive direction, and then V out increases, and that's due to an increase uh, or a decrease, excuse me, in IC. So if S IC decreases, um, so V out can increase uh, up up to up to the point where um, VCC where it reaches VCC basically, and at that point that will mean that there is zero voltage drop across RC which means zero current flowing through RC. And if there is zero current flowing through the transistor, then the transistor is in cutoff. So that provides our upper limit uh, for the voltage. So when V out reaches VCC, that means IC is equal to zero. And therefore the transistor, I'm gonna label it as Q1. Q1 is in cutoff. And um, complementary, if uh, the output voltage decreases or it swings in the negative direction, that's because I see it's increasing. And uh, the farthest down that we can go, uh, we need to keep into consideration the following. For one thing, we need one volt drop across RE. That's how, our, uh, how we're setting our DC bias point to have VE set to one volt, so we cannot go lower than one volt. Uh, but then we also need to have at least 0.3 volts across the um, collector to emitter terminals in the transistor to keep the transistor out of saturation. And so when V out is equal to um, one volt, which is VE, plus the 0.3 volts VCE that will keep the transistor out of saturation, in this case that's 1.3 volts, then that means that um, Q1 is on the verge of saturation. And so basically, you know, these limits between cutoff and saturation dictate how, how far our voltage swing can go. Our maximum output voltage is going to be VCC before the transistor cuts off um, or close to our minimum V out is going to be around 1.3 volts. And our nominal uh, or quiescent point um, V out, V out, we can call it V out sub Q, was actually 10 volts. So we can see that uh, on the positive side, we have um, all the way from 10 volts to 20 volts, that is VCC. So we have a signal swing of 10 volts. And on the negative side, we can go from 10 volts, that is the, uh, the DC point, uh, the DC Q point value, all the way to 1.3 volts. And so we only have 8.7 volts of signal swing. Um, normally when we're talking about, if we're just describing the amplifier in general and talking about its signal swing, we will go by uh, the worst case scenario. So in this case, we could say the amplifier has a signal swing of 8.7 volts. But again, it's slightly um, smaller in the negative direction in this case than it is in the positive direction. We could try to center it a little bit more by increasing the value of VC. Originally, we set VC to 10 volts, which is halfway between VCC and ground. We could have set VC, the, the Q point value of the collector voltage, 
to be the midpoint between 1.3 volts and VCC, and that will have ensured um, a more uh, uh, equidistant uh, positive and negative swing or maximum voltages. We just left it like that for simplicity. Thank you.